Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel and today we're doing something a little bit fun. Um, I'm going to be listening to the Heathers Broadway cast album and the Heathers West End cast album and I'm going to be comparing each song and deciding which version I think is the best. Um, so just a little bit of background before we start, a bit of a confession I suppose. Uh, the first time I ever actually was exposed to Heather's The Musical was when I saw it live in the West End. I had no idea it existed prior to that, but me and my friends were going to London for the weekend and they wanted to go and see Heather's. And so instead of me wandering aimlessly around a city I'd never been in before at night in the pitch black, I decided it probably be best to go with them to Heather's and just, you know, see what it was like. Uh, the only knowledge I had was that it was an 80s movie that had Winona Ryder and Shannon Doherty in it, so I was going in completely blind. I had no idea what it was about, no idea what the songs were like, but you know, I like a musical and so I figured how bad could it possibly be and it had Carrie Hope Fletcher in it and I've loved Carrie Fletcher since she, you know, first started making YouTube back in god knows how long ago that was. Um, so I figured it couldn't be that bad, so I went along. And I loved it. I thought it was incredible. I enjoyed every second of it. And after that, I just spent my whole life sitting playing the album on repeat. But of course, the album is of the Broadway cast, which was not the cast that I saw in the West End, which meant that when the West End cast album came out, it sounded strange to me, even though they were the first version of Heathers I'd ever heard. It sounded weird to me because I'd spent so long listening to the Broadway album. So. It was interesting when they were both out for me to try and compare the two. Like, by the time it came out, I'd actually forgotten the existence of the song I Say No because it wasn't on the album, the Broadway album, and I'd only seen it once in person, so I'd, it went out of my head. So, you know, they it was just kind of weird how I saw the West End cast first, but then the Broadway cast became, like, the default in my brain, but then the West End album came out. You know what I mean. It's it's an interesting... Most people, I think, would have went in the other way for the broadcast version. Uh, broadcast? The Broadway cast was first, and then they found the West End cast. But I had it the other way around. So just bear that in mind. I apologise if that makes my views slightly skewed compared to everyone else. But bear with me. We're going to... I love them both, so we're going to be subjective. Um, And yes, the outfit is intentional. I actually wore this outfit to a fancy dress party at my university a few years ago um, and in my head I was dressed as Heather McNamara because uh, me and my friends were obsessed with Heathers at the time. This was not long after we went to see it in person. Um, but after I put it on I had, I'm not wearing it right now because you can't see it anyway, but I had a yellow tartan skirt as well which I wore and I realised after I put the outfit on I actually looked more like Cher from Clueless than I did Heather McNamara from Heather's but that was um I suppose confirmed to me when we went to the party and one of the younger people that was there came up to me and said oh cool your dress is Iggy Azalea from the fancy music video I've never felt so old in my life she was very apologetic when I said no I'm not but I mean Honestly, like, do the kids these days not know about, about Clueless? Really? Ah! Anyway, anyway, moving on. Moving swiftly on. I might try and adjust this light. I can't decide what I want to do with the lighting today. Oops, I have no idea what that was. And I'm not sure I'm going to be able to get it back from behind the couch. Okay, so I've got the soundtracks here, booted up on Spotify, got my headphones, and we're gonna do a review and a comparison of each song on the soundtrack. Let's get into it. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, so, beautiful. I much prefer Veronica's monologue at the start of the song in the Broadway version. I think Barrett Wilbert Weed's delivery is more natural and it sounds more like how a teenager would speak. 
whereas Carrie's is more like enunciated and I think that probably comes slightly from the fact that she's putting on an accent so like she needs to announce more to get the accent through whereas Barrett's just speaking with a regular voice. Um, I also think that the school kid shouts like you know the free I don't even know what they are loser short bus those um sound more kind of powerful and melodic in the Broadway album version whereas they're more kind of like angsty and gutsy in the West End version not that that makes it any worse it's just different um in terms of the verse I I really prefer Barrett's voice there's just something about the way that she delivers the line this is the thunder no it like I don't know it just hits me like there, there's something about it that just is so good and it, it really gets to me whereas when Carrie sings it I don't I don't feel that in my heart however Carrie's notes in the chorus are like so beautiful that every time I listen I'm just always like oh it like stops me in my tracks like it just sounds so good um and I like the fact that when Carrie sings the second verse you know is fight the urge to strike a match and set this dump ablaze like she's got this like kind of gutsy anger in her voice which I really like I think it, it sounds really cool like you can hear like how determined she has to strike a match and set dump ablaze um but I have to say like the chunk of like the spoken dialogue between like um Veronica and Ra uh, Kurt and Ram and Martha I think the Broadway cast is just much better. I think Barrett sounds more natural when she says it and so does Katie Ladner when she's Martha and I'm not a fan of changing Kurt's line from Martha dump truck why loan to if you want to lose a few pounds you should need more protein in your diet or whatever he says. I don't know there's something really odd about that. I get that he's supposed to be like a protein obsessed jock man but there's like something far less intimidating about saying you need more protein in your diet than calling her a wide load and I don't know if that was the point they wanted to make him sound less horrible but I'm like he is a bully so just make him be a bully just double down and do it and I prefer the way that Barrett delivers a future gas station attendant I don't know there's just something about it like it's like, it feels casually spiteful whereas Carrie's feels like sassy but I like the fact that Barrett kind of says it as if like that's like the most obvious thing in the world to her. She's like, you're gonna be a future gas station attendant. Like she just doesn't really care. I, I like that. In terms of the music though, there's this really big crescendo in the West End version right before the Heather's intro music that I think is absolutely incredible. Like when I hear it, I get like goosebumps because it's just, it's so good. It's just this big right before the it's so good. <laughs> um, when they meet the Heathers, when Veronica meets the Heathers, I prefer Barrett's. I think there's something like more low-key and natural about it. Whereas Carrie, I don't know, it feels as if she's almost going too far trying to distinguish her Veronica from Barrett's Veronica that it actually is kind of detrimental to her performance because like it doesn't sound is is good to me but like I don't know how she was directed for all I know that was like a direction decision and not anything to do with Carrie it doesn't really matter it's just my opinions in the end of the day um when the Heathers come out I find it really difficult to rank either Jessica or Jodie because they have almost identical performances they sound so alike I like the way that Sophie Isaacs makes Heather McNamara's meat cleaver line really creepy because like I think in the Broadway version it's kind of funny she's like you know if I took a meat cleaver down the center of your skull I would have matching halves whereas in the western version she's like I took a meat cleaver down the center of your skull like it sounds really menacing and I quite like that um and I can't really compare them as Flemings because again they sound exactly the same it's probably to be expected when it comes to Carrie Fletcher but she steals the show with the final chorus like her voice is designed to belt and that is what she's doing in this final chorus like she might not be able to hit the notes that Barrett can like the high notes but she can project her voice in a way that Barrett can't like she has a much more reserved performance whereas when Carrie sings it like fills the whole theatre and I just think that's wonderful at the end of Beautiful like it just really it sounds incredible so my verdict on Beautiful I think it has to be the Broadway cast 
Between the dialogue changes and Barrett's more natural performance, I think I just have to give it to the Broadway cast. I can't give it to the West End. Even though it is so good, I just I just prefer Broadway for that one. Okay, Candy Store. Candy Store God, I love Candy Store. <laughs> um so Chandler's monologue sounds more aggressive when Jess Buck even when does it, and I really like that. I don't like the way that Jodie Steele emphasizes why now are you pulling on my dick? Like, I know that R is the word that rhymes, right? It's like, you've come so far, why now are you pulling on my dick? But like, Jessica proved you don't need to emphasize them that they rhyme, like, it's, like, people get it, you know? I prefer that, you've come so far, why now are you pulling on my dick? Whereas she goes like, you've come so far, why now are you pulling? I, I don't like that as much. Um, I just don't think it's necessary. Elle McLemore's I don't know if that's how you pronounce that. I'm always saying Macklemore, but if that's not how it's pronounced, I apologise. Um, Elle Macklemore's version of Heather McNamara, I prefer to Sophie Isaacs in this song. I like the fact that Elle sounds more like a mean girl, whereas Sophie kind of sounds like she's just kind of, not bored, but like she's just less interested. She's more casual about it, whereas I like the fact that Elle's got that kind of Maybe Sesame Street is on. Like, she sounds really scathing. And I like that about it. I also just think that the Heather sound more aggressive in the Broadway version than the West End version. And I like that. I like the aggressive Heathers. But there's one thing that the West End cast has that um, the Broadway cast doesn't when it comes to Candy Store. And that is Jodie's incredible riff. Like, it is phenomenal. I adore Jessica. But she does not like Jodie takes that riff to another level it is absolutely incredible what she does and that is absolutely the best riff i've heard on candy store from any any heather chandler um and those final harmonies in the west end version are fantastic I, actually i think the harmonies throughout the whole song are better on the west end cast like they just their voices blend so perfectly it sounds incredible so I struggle with this one because I think they're both fantastic, but I'm gonna give it to Broadway just for the overall polish. That if I was giving it just on riff, it would obviously be West End for Jodie. But overall, I'm giving it to Broadway. Fight for me. Fight for me. So the first verse, the bit that's kind of more spoken than sung, Sounds better when Barrett does it. Um, I'm, I'm just, yeah, 100% sounds better when, Carrie does, uh, when Barrett does it. I don't really like Carrie's pronunciation. And again, I'm sure that's just because she's doing, she's putting on an American accent, but I just, I don't like it. I don't like the pronunciation. But that for me is the only bit of the song that I can give to Barrett over Carrie. I think the rest of it, Carrie's vocals are just perfect. She makes the song sound so sweet and beautiful and she's got these kind of like occasional giggles and there's emotion to it and it just warms my heart it really does like I don't know I just find her more believable like I can I can feel the adoration in her voice I can like hear the heart eyes on her face she just sounds so in love with this stranger it doesn't sound like she's just singing a song because it's a musical like I actually feel the emotion of it and the weight of it so for that one 100% my verdict is that that goes to the west end Hands down. Freeze your brain. So before I start talking about freeze your brain, I think I should address a thing first. So I used to be like properly in love with Ryan McCartan. However, ever since Dove Cameron came out to talk about how horrible he was to her during their relationship, I've soured on him a lot. Dove Cameron is like my favourite person in the whole world. So, you know, it's difficult for me to stand by the person who treated her so badly because that's just not that's not cool um but despite that I do think that Ryan McCartan has a fantastic voice and this is you know a review of music so that's all that really matters so I'm putting my personal feelings on Ryan aside for this one um and I'm picking who I think does the song the best I don't you know I still think Ryan has a fantastic voice and if you detach the voice from the person you know that's what we're doing here we're not looking at people we're looking at performance so 
that's it. <laughs> this particular song has to go to Jamie Moscato. He is such a wonder of musical theatre. His American accent is, I think, the best in the whole show. It sounds so genuine and authentic. And I've heard what he sounds like when he speaks with his normal accent and it's, it's incredible how he makes himself sound so different. Um, I also think he makes JD seem less like a kind of cool rebel outlaw and more of like a quirky, creepy outcast. Like, he's not like the cool dude in the leather jacket, he's like the creepy guy that you run away from. <laughs> and I think that's that does a lot for it, that like, Veronica sees him as a cool guy, but we as the audience can hear that there's something much more sinister brewing under there, and I think Jamie does a really good job of bringing that out in JD. His voice also, like his singing voice, just... I don't know, it does things, like, <laughs> it just gets right into my soul, I love it. He's got such a warmth and a tone to his voice when he sings. Um, like, the line, uh, from Las Vegas to Boston, linoleum aisles that I love to get lost in. I don't know, like, there's something about the way that he says those words, it just sounds so melodic, like it's gorgeous. And the way that he says, Veronica Sawyer, it's, <laughs> I love it. Also, Jamie can belt in a way that Ryan McCartan can't. Like, Ryan has a great voice, but Jamie projects in a way that Ryan can't. And I just... Everyone knows I'm a sucker for a good belt in a song, so... My verdict in this one is that Jamie Moscato took my love for Ryan McCartan and burned it down with the West Westerberg school gym. So, the West End wins hands down. <laughs> This song is ruined for me because all I can see is Riverdale. <laughs> uh, all I can hear is, is let's jump in my heated pool. <laughs> okay, so big fun. I like the dialogue changes and there's very few songs in this where I like the dialogue changes but I do like this one. I like that Heather McNamara has that comment about like Veronica's drinking. She's like, you're a natural, just like my mom. Like, I think that's hilarious. And I like changing the the line about the weed to like, how do I, um, to Veronica being popular. Something, oh, I can't remember the lines, like something, something, it's a blur, how do I get so popular? Like that. I really like that one. I prefer it. I think, I don't know, I was never really a fan of the weed line, I always felt like it was seemed a bit out of place. Not that there's anything wrong with having weed, and I think they probably were doing weed at the party. I just think, I don't know, I like the how'd I get so popular line a lot more. Um, and I think the West End cast is hilarious in this one. I love the Heathers, um, I love the way they deliver their lines, like their lines about like Martha and, you know, the pig. And I, I love their harmony on dang dang ding a ding dang a dang I think they definitely take it for the diggity dang a dangs in this one and Rams are you trying to poison me <laughs> it's priceless like in general I think I prefer Kurt and Ram in the West End version so I, I prefer them in this song as well yeah for for me and um when it comes to big fun the West End cast takes it because it's just big fun isn't a song I actually like that much in the Broadway version, um, it was never one that I vibed with that much, whereas in the West End version, it I think it's hilarious and I really enjoy listening to it, so they must have done something right, is what I'm saying. <laughs> Dead girl walking. Dead girl walking is my favourite song, so I'm taking this one very seriously. I need to make the right call on this one. When I saw Carrie perform this live, I was like, blown away like instantly it became my favorite song even though I hadn't heard the rest of the musical yet I just knew that this was going to be the best song in it like nothing would top it for me and I was still singing it like even though I'd only seen it in that one show I was still singing it like the next day because it just was so stuck in my head um however obviously now I'm used to hearing Barrett's version more than Carrie's I kind of struggle to decide which one I like more uh it's definitely harder for me to pick a favourite. I think Carrie's voice is perfect for this song. It's the kind of music she was born to sing. Like these big, powerful numbers like this. That is what her voice is made for. 
but there's something about Barrett's kind of rasp to her voice, the more kind of rock sound that she has, that just adds a layer to a song. The song that Carrie's voice doesn't have, it is really rocky and she's got this kind of almost like Pat Benatar like tone to her voice and I think that's like exactly what Dead Girl Walking needs. So I think she performs it perfectly in my opinion. Barrett has like pitch perfect performance on this one. As a side note, I still have no idea why they changed uh, Sorry But I Really Had To Wake You to Had To See You Hope I Didn't Wake You. I don't get what that adds to the song. Apart from every time I hear the West End version, I forget that they've changed the lyric and then I sang the wrong line and I sound dumb. I don't know what they thought they were achieving there. In terms of the actual like bridge and then that final like, love this dead girl walk it, I think Carrie wins. I really do. I think her voice is suited to like the emotional piece for the bridge and then suited for like the big belts. But the final note. Like, they had to lower it for Carrie because she couldn't hit the note. But I don't think that's a bad thing because, to be honest, nobody should be able to hit that note. Barrett could hit it, but not comfortably. It took a lot for her to get to that note. And from what I've heard, it actually almost damaged her vocal cords because she was doing that every night and her voice couldn't take it. And that that's allegedly part of the reason why she quit so suddenly was because she just got to the point where she was like I can't keep doing these performances it's going to destroy my vocal cords so I think that proves that just because you can do something doesn't mean that you should and that you shouldn't try and make people have notes that aren't comfortable just just change the note like everyone will live my verdict here is that it's really close because they both nail this song but for me, I'm going to have to give it to Barrett just for her more rocky, raspy performance because that just that does it for me, personally. The inside of me. You're making me sound like air supply. <laughs> Barrett and Carrie are pretty much level for the, the intro to this song, but when it comes to Heather Chandler, Jessica definitely wins. The way that she suddenly comes out with this kind of classical, almost operatic sounding voice. It's so unexpected when you consider how she sounded in Candy Store earlier that I think it's just, it's such a huge shift that I really like and I think it really takes you, like it takes you back when you hear it and it surprises you. Whereas Jodie kind of has this high girly tone to her voice, which I, I don't like as much. I prefer Jessica's more kind of full sound. Um, but the harmonies on the West End album are gorgeous. At first I thought I preferred the Broadway harmonies, but actually when I went on to listen to the West End, I was like, nah, 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 this is, this is better. Um, but I absolutely prefer the Broadway Miss Fleming. No offence, I've completely forgotten her name. Uh, the actress that plays Miss Fleming in the West End version, but I just, I much prefer Broadway Fleming. She sounds more natural, in my opinion. I just, I don't know, I prefer her. For me, I don't like the dialogue changes at all in this song in the West End version. I think, I get that Veronica's reaction is supposed to mimic the scene from the movie where she's like laughing and then when Miss Fleming like looks at her, she like pretends that she's crying instead. But I don't know, I just prefer the lines that Veronica gets in the, the Broadway version. I think they just, I don't know, it just, it has more power for me than her coming out with this like, um, I haven't, you know, felt emotions like this since Hands Across America. Like, I I don't know. I don't like that at all. And then at the end of the song, when Heather gets her, like, I'm bigger than John Lennon screechy bit, it has to go to Jessica. Jodie does not have the same power to me. It, yeah, it has to be Jessica. Yeah, so reluctantly, I'm going to give it to Broadway on this one. Just for the dialogue changes and the way Jodie performs the song in the West End version, but I still love the harmonies in the West End, but Broadway just has that edge for me. Ooh, this is a controversial one. Okay, let's get into it. Okay, okay, okay. This one's odd for me, just because unlike the majority of Heather's fans, I 
heard You Were Welcome first and then heard Blue. So like You Were Welcome was like the original song for me because it was the only one that I knew. But I really don't like Blue. I think it's really dumb. It's catchy and it's not a bad song. It's a good song on its own. But it's really stupid. I don't like the idea or the term blue balls and for a start. And I just think having such an upbeat song in this situation where Veronica is about to be assaulted or raped by these two guys. And, she, you know, they're singing this song about you make my balls so blue. I'm like, this is not comfortable. This is, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. And the Heathers are joining in as well. Like, they think this is, like, funny that this is happening to Veronica. I really don't like it. I don't like Blue at all. And I know a lot of fans have said that they felt that Blue made Kurt and Ram seem more like dumb jocks rather than, you know, racists. But unfortunately, that's what they are. That is what they are trying to do. And we don't get to shy away from that by giving them a little cute pop song. Let's not start in the ideology of they're only high schoolers, they don't know any better, because that's, that's not the case. What they're doing is wrong, and we should call them out on that. You're Welcome, on the other hand, in my opinion, is great. I love the way that they describe the female experience here. You know, they, Ram and Kurt blame her for how she's dressed, say it's that it's her fault that they want to, you know, assault her, that, you know, it's what she gets for wanting to be popular, that this is just the consequence of, of trying to be a popular girl. Telling her that she should be thankful for having a guy like them, a football star, interested in them. Acting like they're some kind of god of sex. And then having the girl have to use self-defence against them to get out of that situation. So I think that that is a much better way to describe this scene. And it makes... It's, it's a lot creepier, it makes them come across a lot worse, but then at the end Veronica like turns it around on them and, and manages to fight them off, which makes her look quite powerful. So I like that. And also I like the fact that the Heathers aren't involved in You're Welcome, so they're not actively encouraging Kurt and Ram to, you know, do these horrible things to Veronica, which, considering they are supposed to be her friends, is, I think, for the best. I also just think that You're Welcome is a better song in general. I really enjoy it. Um, I think it's much better than Blue. So, yeah, the verdict on that one is absolutely goes to the West End. Okay, so we're talking about Blue again, kind of. What is going- my hair is getting so messed up because of these headphones. Ugh. So Blue Reprise is the closest that Heather Duke got to a song in the original musical, which I think is so sad. It was great seeing her taking the red scrunchie and declaring that she was going to replace Heather Chandler, but it wasn't much of a song. Whereas Never Shut Up Again is a song, and it's a good one at that. It is brilliant. Duke becoming Chandler is such an important part of the movie's narrative, and I don't think it was given enough weight in the original Broadway version. Whereas Never Shut Up Again you know, reveals exactly who Duke is at her core. This master manipulator who stayed quiet, waited for her moment, and then stole Heather Chandler's crown. And I like how they bring back big fun and the dang dang diggity dang a dang. It's a really nice touch, I think. And the line, then a house fell on her head, the witch is dead ding dong, shows like exactly how much Heather Duke hated Heather Chandler all along, how she was never her friend. I always thought in the movie that Duke is the worst of the Heathers. Like, I think that what she does in the movie is worse than all the others. So I love that she gets a proper villain song here and we get to kind of find out more about her. So that her her change to becoming, like, the bad one, becoming the Heather Chandler of the group, makes more sense and we get to get a better sense of who she is as a person. I know people have commented that Never Shut Up Again doesn't really fit with the rest of the show musically. And they are right, it's a bit too poppy, but I don't mind it. It's a fun song and it, it does a lot for Heather Duke's character, so I'll let that one slide. Yeah, so Blue Reprise versus Never Shut Up Again absolutely goes to the West End. 100%, not a contest. Our love is God. Our love is God. Our love is God. 
This is another one that Riverdale ruined for me. I cannot listen to this song now without picturing Kevin and Bangs having some weird cult wedding officiated by Evelyn Evernever. So welcome to hell for me. <laughs> welcome to my hell. Okay. First of all, I just want to say I think it's really cool that the musical writers took one throwaway line of JD's from the movie and turned it into a whole song. Like, he just turns around to it at one point and goes, Our love is God! And then they made a whole song out of it. Genius. For me, I think this song is perfect on both sides of the pond. Carrie and James's voices blend really beautifully, whereas Ryan and Barrett have this really great kind of tension when they perform together. So for me, the decision comes down to the dialogue that they use in the song. Personally, I prefer the dialogue in the Broadway recording. I like the pizza line and all the dialogue when they're in the woods together. And I think for me, that's really the only thing I can use to, to make a choice between these two. And so as tough as it is, I'm going to give Our Love Is God to the Broadway cast, purely for the dialogue. They were just 17. This isn't a comparison because they I don't even think there is a West End recorded version of Promer Hell for me to compare it to. I just wanted to point out that it really bugs me how Promer Hell isn't on the cast album, either album. Because I know it's not really a song as much as a short musical interlude, but it's the opening part of the second act of the show. And I really like the lines, you know, they were just 17, they still had room to grow, they could have turned out good, but now we'll never know. And I know I said earlier, you know, we can't treat Kurt and Ram as if they were just 17 year olds and they don't know what they're doing but at the same time I like this way that they keep putting out throughout the the film or the musical that Veronica has this idealistic view of the world where she sees you know I think I'm a good person I think there's good in everyone you know she believes that people can change you know if we could change back then we can change again she believes that people can be redeemed and so even though Ram and Kurt did something horrible to her or attempted to she still doesn't think they deserve to die because they could have got better, they could have changed, they could have redeemed. But now we'll never know. And I'm really sad that they don't include that in the albums because it's such a good piece, I think. Anyway, moving on to my dead gay son. I want this song played at my funeral. I swear it only exists like purely for making hysterical va fan videos, which I also think is the reason that Gay or European exists from Legally Blonde, because all I ever see is people making fan videos or singing it at Comic Con in character. Um, I'm sure that my dead gay son only exists for that reason. In terms of the actual versions, uh, there's very little difference between the Broadway and the West End version. They sound so similar and there's not really any kind of musical changes or anything. It really is just the voices are different so I'm just gonna have to judge it on that. Speaking of fan videos has anyone ever made a video of Chuck from Supernatural singing this song about Castiel after you know the whole turbo hell incident because if not someone should go on that. Castiel fandom I'm counting on you. Yeah so just judging purely on the voices I'm giving it to the Broadway cast not not for any other reason other than just think that's the one that sounds better. <laughs> Don't have any other opinions. Yeah, I really didn't need to listen to these back to back because I already knew what I was going to be picking, but I thought I would do it anyway. Um, yeah, it, Carrie and Jamie's vocals blend so beautifully and Carrie's like aggressive intro adds so much weight to the song where she's like, fine, we're damaged, really damaged, but that does not make us wise. I love that about it. I love the way that she delivers that. Jamie's harmonies in the chorus are much more noticeable than Ryan's. Like when you're listening, you can hear the, you know, let us be 17 if we still got the right. You know, like, I think I love hearing those harmonies and I like that I can hear them more in the West End version than I can in the Broadway version. Carrie really gets the belt in this song and I think that makes it a lot more powerful than Barrett's version. Because this is like the biggest ballad in the show and you need a lot of power behind it. So for me, like, Carrie and Jamie took this song and just made it even better than it already was. Um, also, I noticed when I, uh, before I played them side by side, like, at, at, at the same time, 
because I was I thought that this, uh, the West End version was slower so I played them side by side and it actually is just ever so slightly slower which just gives it that little bit more emotion and I like that about it. Yeah so the verdict is for taking a wonderful song and making it phenomenal West End cast you win this one. <laughs> Okay, good, it's over. Um, okay, God, I, I just really hate, oops, I really hate Shine a Light. It's my least favourite song on the whole show. I find it really irritating, so that was tough to get through, but we've done it now, we've made it, we can move on. Um, yeah, God, I hate this song so much. Uh, I think it's because I just don't really like Miss Fleming. Like, she really annoys me, and then she gets a whole song, and I'm just like, dear God, please, please stop, please stop. So as much as I don't like them, in terms of a comparison, personally for me, I prefer the Broadway version more. Um, I think Rebecca's the better singer, but her voice doesn't really suit to this song. And I prefer that Mich the way that Michelle delivers the monologue in the middle. So for me, it goes to Broadway, but I, I don't like the song. So just, you know, make it that what you will. <laughs> oh, okay. Now we're moving on to one of my favourites. Because this is my song. Lifeboat. I float in a boat in a raging black ocean, low in the water, and nowhere to go. The tiniest lifeboat full of people I know. Does anyone else think that the intro to this song sounds like the intro to When September Ends by Green Day? Because whenever I hear it at the start, it's like, even the piano line, I feel like I'm about to go, Summer has come in fast. <laughs> Especially the West End version. Just me? Okay. Okay. Elle Macklemore really put her heart and soul into this song, I think. Like, in God can she belt. Like, her um, her belt on the bridge is just fantastic. She manages to get out all of, like, Heather's pain and fear and anger into that performance. And even though the song is so short, it, like, packs so much power into that tiny space of time. I really enjoy Sophie Isaac's voice and I like her version of this song. Um, it, it's really difficult for me to pick. I, I think as well, like, one of the things we have to talk about is that the West End version is actually in a different key than the Broadway version. It's lower. And there's something almost creepy about it because of that. And it allows Sophie to kind of have these lower notes that give it a bit more weight as a song. But even with that, for me, I just prefer the Broadway version. It's really close. And I think... They both are incredible and I've seen Sophie live and she's so adorable when you see her on stage performing this. But for me, I just prefer the way that Elle performs it. But it's it's very close. And I love me, Heather McNamara. <laughs> so Shine a Light Reprise is not much of a song. It's very short. Um, I've never been a fan of Alice Lee's voice. I think it's really nasally. So for me, I much prefer to Shan. However, one of the things I don't like in the West End version is that they took out the bitch and moan line. And I don't know why, because it's like, it's a really clever reference to Candy Store. It's like, go on and bitch and moan. And I'm like, why would you take that out? Why would you make the song less cool and like take out your own clever reference? Why? So as much as I don't like that, for performance alone, it has to go to the West End just for Tishan, because she's so much better than Alice Lee. No offense to Alice Lee, but Tishan takes it. I didn't need to listen to that one, I just wanted to because I'm not even including it in the actual like final count for this video but it's, I, I love this song. So yeah, like I say, I'm not going to include I Say No against the count because it doesn't have a Broadway counterpart but I can't just ignore it because like w this is such a good song. When I heard it on YouTube after they released the video, I can't believe I'd forgotten about it from the live show because it's so powerful and such a brilliant tribute to Veronica's character. And you, I mean, you can tell that it's been written specifically for Carrie because it suits her voice so much more than the other songs and it doesn't sound like something that Barrett would have sung. But when I listen to it, like, I feel so happy because it gives Carrie that time to show off her vocals and what they can really do and how they're supposed to sound. And it's one of my favourite songs in the whole show, genuinely. I love it. And I know there are fans who've criticised it and I do understand why. I know it's kind of quite classical musical theatre as opposed to the rock style of the rest of the show which does make it feel as if it doesn't really fit in and I know that 
people have said that Veronica didn't need this song and I understand that like she doesn't need a song to say that she's breaking up with JD like we all know that and she's already ex expressed her distaste for JD by now but I don't think that makes it a bad song or that it deserves to be removed like the only part of it that I don't like is when she says hurting people that's your choice my friend I don't like my friend I think that sounds really dumb <laughs> But apart from that, I think this is genuinely one of my favourite songs on the whole show. So I love it and I just wanted to talk about it even though I'm not factoring it into the final count. Let's move on to Kindergarten Boyfriend. Kindergarten Boyfriend. Somehow this is one of the most difficult songs in the whole show to sing well, I think anyway. Katie Ladner performs it beautifully and when she belts out like To a new kindergarten, I get physical chills. And she manages to sound so heartbroken yet so hopeful at the same time. She captures everything you need to know about Martha Dunstock and about how she feels at this point where she's about to, you know, jump off of the school gym roof. And you can hear that like she's broken hearted but she's also looking forward to what comes next which is heartbreaking, heartbreaking. Jenny O'Leary's version of the song is also really beautiful but it's softer and less powerful which isn't a bad thing in itself considering Martha is quite a, a timid quiet character but I just think this song sounds much better with all this like power and desperation behind it. I also don't like how she elongo uh, elongates a horse with wings because I just think it's funnier the way that when Katie does it she goes like in a horse with wings like it's funny when it's it, I don't know it just has more it's funnier to me ultimately though they are both fantastic singers put, pulling off a really difficult song with a huge amount of emotion and they both are stars but for me the verdict has to be Broadway because Katie's version gives me chills that Jenny's just doesn't but they're both fantastic go, 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 go. okay this is a tough one because there's things that I like and don't like in each version of Yo Girl. I personally hate the dialogue changes in Veronica's conversation with her parents in the West End version. I don't like that they removed Heather's dialogue when she goes, you know, he's got your hand dieting down cold because I think, you know, there's something really unsettling about it, the way that she's like taunting Veronica for forging her handwriting earlier on in the show and now she's like, oh, he's done it to you now, like you're going to be the next me. And I think it loses something by taking that out. And I don't like how Veronica's like, you're sending me to a shrink? And we lost a lot of like Miss Sawyer's misplaced advice where she's like, I've been through everything you're going through. Because like, she hasn't, you know? I, I really enjoy all the dialogue in the original Broadway version. I don't like what they've done with it here. And I think that Barrett's line delivery just has more, I don't know, it has more weight to it in my opinion. I think there's just something a lot better about the way that Barrett delivers those lines she's got this kind of I don't know she sounds like she's gonna throw up like she genuinely sounds like she's on the brink of throwing up where Carrie just sounds more like surprised and less horrified by the whole thing um despite my dislike of Alice Lee singing elsewhere in the show I do prefer the way that she delivers the opening in such this like mean-spirited tone where she's like you know, Martha Dumchuck took a belly flap. Like, it's so cold. And I really like that about it. Uh, but in terms of JD, I much prefer Jamie Moscato's JD at the end of the song. He sounds, makes him sound really, like, psychotic and hilarious all at the same time. And it's so good. But the thing, it, you'll notice I was rolling my eyes when I had the, the earphones on my head. That was me um, reacting to what's that brimstone smell because every time I hear that I hate that like I don't know why you would change she's not looking so well to what's that brimstone smell it is an awful line change for god's sake. <laughs> so my verdict is definitely Broadway but bonus points for Jamie Moscato in the West End version. He wins the JD but the song goes to Broadway. Meant to be yours. Meant to be yours is one of my favorite songs in the show so forgive me for getting very emotional at my two gorgeous vocal boys. Ryan McCartan's vocals here are absolutely incredible and like prove that he's meant for Broadway. He puts so many conflicted emotions into the open open the door verse you know the Veronica open the door please Veronica open the door 
and you can hear the pain in the final verse when he's like I can't do this alone and the tone I don't know there's this tone in his voice that just cuts through my cold icy heart and I love it if I'm breaking this song down I would say that Ryan is the better vocalist but Jamie Moscato is the better actor like Jamie makes this song so perfectly JD like you can like the way that he portrays characters through song is incredible and like I said earlier he makes JD's psychotic personality so clear in his performance and considering that this is when JD like completely loses his damn mind it's the perfect time to express those psychotic traits <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna do something that I swore to myself I wouldn't do. I'm calling it a tie. I've sat here for five minutes trying to make a decision and I just can't. They are both flawless. I think Ryan does better verses and Jamie does better choruses and let's just leave it to that. They both win. Points all round. Go Rottweilers! I hate that. I feel like this whole video is making it sound like I don't like Carrie's Veronica and that's not the case at all. I think she is like beyond fantastic. I think Harry is phenomenal. But there are some times that Barrett just steals the show and this is one of those times. The sheer frustration and rage in her voice followed by like the sadness when she tries to appeal to JD is just so perfect. And I feel like Carrie's Veronica sounds more determined whereas Barrett's sounds like this is like the last thing she wants to do but she's come to the point where she has no choice but to face JD and die in the process. I think that the harmonies and the cheerleaders chants are better in the Broadway version as well but yeah and I'm still not a fan of Rebecca's that's her name Rebecca Rebecca's Miss Fleming. What I do like in the West End version however is JD's commentary about Veronica's appeal to his humanity like he has these lines like don't talk about my mom that I think really adds a lot to this scene and I hate that they changed like hey what is it like let's go Westerberg something like that they changed it to go Rottweilers I hate that I hate that it sounds so dumb uh okay yeah so for me on this one it has to be Broadway because from Barrett to the cheerleaders chance to go Rottweilers <laughs> everything's just better in the Broadway version I am damaged okay this one's driving me mad um like I want to give it to the West End purely because Jamie knocks it out of the park with his vocals but I hate the dialogue change at the start I liked how you know and the um the Broadway one it says like I am damaged really damaged but you're not beyond repair which echoes when Veronica says during 17 like fine we're damaged so like he's confirming again that they're both damaged in different ways but Veronica can be fixed while he can't whereas in the um in the Bro uh, West End version he says like I am damaged but you're different you're the one we ought to spare and I just don't think, like, nah, I just much prefer when he says that they're both damaged but that Veronica can be fixed. I think that's much better. And also in the Broadway version he has this line, he's like, he tells her to like go and make things better. Which echoes the way that JD thought that what he was doing was making the world better. Like he wanted to make the world a better place. But in his opinion the way to do that was to take away all the things that made it bad and, you know, kill them. Whereas Veronica, you know, he can see... The way that I see it, it's that he can see now with Veronica that Veronica can make the world better using love because, like she said, you know, love will win and hate will get you nothing, you know, and yeah, and I say no, she has that line of like, I believe that love can win and hate will bring you nothing in the end. And so like JD's realised that like, she can change the world using love, whereas he was using hate and it wasn't going to fix anything, it was only going to make it worse. And so I think that having him say like you're damaged but you're not beyond repair and go leave here make things better is a more powerful conclusion to his narrative than just kind of the way it comes across in the West End version is like he's saying I don't get why you're trying to stop me from you know like he's saying 
I still don't get why you're doing this, but you beat me so I can see it. Which I just think doesn't achieve that same level of realisation and understanding in the West End version. And that makes me sad, because like, I would rather that he did. But vocally though, I think Jamie wins by a landslide. So, I'm struggling. <laughs> I think my verdict here is going to be that Broadway gets it due to the narrative of the song, not the performance. But just overall, I think everything about the narrative and the Broadway version, I think it's just better. And so even though I think Jamie gives a better performance, I have to give it to Broadway because the song's just better in that version. So I'll give it to Broadway. And we're on to the final song in this show. And this is one of those times where Carrie steals the show of a Barrett. Her line delivery in the song, both in the singing and the dialogue, is just wonderful and portrays exactly the emotion that Veronica should have at this point in the story. I also love the changes to the lyrics when they put like, we want a better world so why not start tonight? It makes so much sense considering the theme of the whole show is that they're trying to make the world a better place. And I like the way that Carrie does like, kinda blew me off. <laughs> it's really funny. The one thing I do prefer in the Broadway version is the blending of Barrett and Katie's voices. I think they've got like such a good harmony and it gives me chills every time. But overall I think the performances are better in the West End version. And so my verdict in this one is going to be that I'm giving it to the West End. So let's count up, let's see what my final verdict is. So the final verdict is 13 points to Broadway and 9 points to the West End. So in the end, Broadway wins, and I suppose it's not surprising considering it's the original version. However, the West End cast and production are phenomenal, and I mean that seriously. And I highly recommend, if it does come back, if we ever open up again and we can go to the theatre and Heathers comes back, I would highly recommend going to see it if you can. The three new songs are fantastic, and in my opinion, all three of them are better than the ones that they replace, or just, you know, in I say no's case, just being in addition. Carrie and Jamie, were amazing and Jodie's performance really needs to be seen in the flesh to understand like how wonderful her portrayal of Heather Chandler was. So ultimately though, even though Barrett Wilbert Reed will always be born to play Veronica Sawyer and I know that wholeheartedly, she will always be the definitive. You know, there is still a lot to be said about the West End version. I think in summary what we can take from this is that Heather's the musical is fantastic and you should really just listen to both soundtracks interchangeably because that's what I do. So thank you for coming out and seeing another one of my videos. I really like doing this. It's nice to do something a bit fun and where I'm not talking about, you know, things that are annoying me. We're just having a fun time going through something that I really like. So thanks for watching. Leave me a like, leave me a comment, subscribe if you haven't already and stick around for whatever I put out next, because at this point I don't even know what it is. Thanks, and I'll see you then. Bye!